everybody. Six thirty. Here we go. Now we're working. Mike is working. Can people hear? Okay. Yep. Yes. Great. Um, thank you all for coming out. We arranged it the hottest night of the year for this. So. <laughs> So we're sorry, we do apologize for the noise of the air conditioning. I know that it is uh, difficult to hear sometimes. I will do my best at the mic, but we do have uh, computer servers in the room that need to stay cool, so we can't turn them off. Uh, we get severely reprimanded by our IT people when we turn them off. So we will try to uh, work with the mic or, or whatever, or people can certainly come closer. Uh, my name is Bill Fraser. I'm the city manager here. Uh, our goal tonight is to um, go talk through. Here's our schedule for tonight. Uh, some brief comments from Mayor Watson to kick the meeting off, and then I'm just going to walk through basics about this parking garage, you know, who, what, when, where, why, the sort of ABCs of the garage, and then um, go to some frequently asked questions. We've already started getting a lot of questions, some of them are similar. I will do my best to answer them. I'm going to be clear right from the get-go. I'm not a designer. I'm not an engineer. I'm not an expert. So if we can't answer your question, we're going to try to take note of it and get it out published to, uh, to do the best. We tried to put this together, but it's an overview. Um, after we do that, we'll walk through what the next steps are in the process. And then really what we hope to get is questions, comments, and suggestions from all of you about uh, what you like, what you don't like, what can we improve it, should we do this, shouldn't we do it, et cetera. And then um, I would love to end by 8 p.m. if possible with <laughs> this size crowd. I think that's okay. So, with no further ado, I'm going to kick it off to um, Mayor Watson. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, this is a really big project for us, and it's, it's a big deal, and it's worth uh, knowing of what all the facts are and uh, asking good questions about it. So, um, I just want to give you a little uh, context for this. I know since I became a counselor um, five or six years ago at this point, uh, I've been fielding questions about parking in the city of Montpelier, and so it's it's really exciting to me to have the possibility of, um, of a, a parking garage or a solution to this project, or to a solution to, to that problem. Uh, you know, one of the things I think that is worth noting about this uh, project is that uh, it is intended to leverage uh, some some private uh, 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 business here, which is not just any business; it's a hotel. Uh, which exists to bring people in from out of town. So one of the things that I am excited about for this project is that this is going to bring more people in from out of town to help support our downtown businesses. I think that's going to be really important for uh, our community moving forward to have a thriving downtown. Uh, so that's, that's another uh, point I would make about this. And then the last is uh, one of the things that came up uh, over and over again in the council discussion uh, was about um, just the nature of parking in Montpelier, that if we were to stack parking, uh, if we were to uh, consolidate it, that that uh, gives us some options for what we might want to do with our street parking. Um, you know, parking is not always everybody's favorite uh, topic, but, uh, but putting it all together and then um, having some more options for what we want to do with street parking, whether that's parklets or bike lanes or whatever it is, um, it, it at least gives us some choices there. So I, uh, hopefully, hopefully, no, I don't think any of this is going to be new for me, but um, I'm looking forward to, to talking more about this. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to Bill. Thank you, Mayor. So we get lights. Oh yeah, lights would be good. I knew there was something wrong here. <laughs> We're going to work on our staging. <laughs> ah, there we go. Now we can see better. Sorry, you lost your lighting. Next. So um, a lot of this, you, many of you may have already known or read about, but I'm just going to go through this. As, uh, these are really the basics. What is this project? We're talking about a 348 space parking garage. In addition, 50 leased surface spaces. We currently lease uh, about 50 spaces from Capitol Plaza. We will be continuing to do that in a different location. So while this garage is sitting on top of those, we will continue to have those. That, re that results in 160 net new parking spaces in downtown. I'll talk about that a little more in a minute. And we can do this without increasing property taxes, and I'll explain that. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Oops. 
Okay, so this, oh. oops, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> here we go. This is just a basic overview image. I would be clear that the parking garage here, you can see the white proposed Hampton Inn in the center, the Capitol Plaza is in the foreground. Next to that is Christ Church, and behind that, that box is a proposed new housing for Christ Church. Probably isn't going to happen for two or three years at least, but we've been, us and the Capitol Plaza and Christ Church have been trying to plan for this so that we can accommodate everything. Behind those housing is the parking garage. Now that garage in that image is not the one we're proposing. That's the one that's been approved for the, the, the hotel only. That's only a 200 unit garage. But I don't have this total image with the larger garage. I just wanted to, people to see the, the general layout. Behind the Hampton Inn is the one Taylor project, which is under construction now. So that is the transit center and 30 affordable housing units uh, and the bike path you can see swinging by uh, and going along. So where will this happen? I just showed you. So the, uh, it will be in the garage, but the garage will be behind Christchurch on property that is currently owned by Capital Plaza. The hotel will be uh, behind Capital Plaza. This is just another site plan of it. Again, the smaller garage on this site plan um, but just so people can see how the traffic flows through, we will have um, deeded access from State Street and Taylor Street to the garage. There'll either be city streets or deeded access, uh, rights of way. Uh, and in the center, that blue in the center is the new parking that's being constructed, the, the surface parking that will be leased for public short-term parking in addition to the long-term. So who's doing the project, right? We're talking about a lot of things. The city would be owning, constructing, and developing the garage, managing, and running the garage. The uh, property that it would be on is going to be donated by Capital Plaza to the city for this project. It's worth approximately 500,000, give or take 250 in either direction, I hope. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and then the Capital Plaza will be on their own property developing their own uh, Hampton Inn. One question that's come up, and it's not my place to speak for Capital Plaza, and they are here to speak for themselves, but I've heard from several people that, um, why are we doing this? Because Hilton is just paying for all of this. And I want to be clear that, that our, the local family that owns this actually is purchasing a, a franchise agreement from Hilton and developing this with their own financing and own money. So the Hilton Corporation is not paying for this in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to make sure that is clear. So why are we doing this, right? That's, what's the point? And I'm sure a lot of people have opinions about that. Well, we had, a couple of years ago, we commissioned an economic development strategic plan, had many community stakeholders involved, uh, many residents, many merchants, and we tried to identify ways that we could help responsibly grow the community, uh, share the tax base, and also make us more vibrant. The top two, top three things that came out of that were, one, a transformational downtown project, hotel. Two, need to improve parking, and three, housing. Um, this project addresses all of that in some way. Um, so this is really a, a, a continuation of, of a plan and identified set of needs. This isn't, I don't think, uh, just a reaction. New public parking, I mentioned there are 160 uh, parking spaces. I've heard some people say, what's that mean? So I checked, we have 610 parking spaces under city management right now. That includes all the meters on the streets, all the parking lots that we own, sell permits or, or rights to. Obviously there's plenty of other free parking around the city. But we have 610 managed spaces. So 160 net new is a 26% increase in managed parking in the core downtown. So uh, it is a significant difference, it's not a small thing. Um, the new hotel is, as we mentioned, key economic uh, driver. It will bring, uh, as the mayor said, new people to town. Uh, it's obviously a private business, but there is a public benefit to that. Um, again, this can help accommodate affordable housing. I think we've talked about 20 or 25 units of affordable housing. That's on top of the 30 units of affordable housing the city's building at one Taylor. Um, and again, the 50 uh, surface parking spots, those are included in the 160 net new. The bike path, uh, as we saw in the image, there's a bike path going through there. Before this project came, there wasn't really a good connection or a good uh, ADA compliant connection. This is going to allow us to build a real, uh, very good small park-like area with ramps and a place that should be bike repair tools. Uh, Capital Plaza kind of designed it. The city will take it over as, uh, the, as 
called our construction project, but this is really, I think, important. People can park in this garage, use the bike path. Guests of the hotel can use this bike path, as can, of course, all of us. Happening. And finally, city, we have local options tax here. We have a rooms, meals, and alcohol tax. Uh, 80 more rooms is uh, more tax revenue to the city. None of that has been factored into the calculations of this project. So any of that revenue is something above and beyond for the city that has not been factored in here. But that is a benefit to the city. Again, as those people are in town and they spend money on meals and alcohol, that is also additional revenue. When will this happen? Well, of course, nothing ever seems to move as fast as we like sometimes, and for some people probably it's happening too fast, but it will be triggered off of a bond vote um, tentatively scheduled for November 6th. Now, the City Council has given um, preliminary approval to go forward with this project, but they'll be taking a final vote whether or not to put this on the ballot on October 3rd. Uh, after that, uh, November 6th is the general election day when we're voting for governor and everything else, so we'll be coming in and we can vote on this project probably a couple of other items. Um, the permitting processes will be happening parallel to that. So we expect, again, uh, the hotel itself has already been permitted. The smaller garage has already been permitted. Uh, that happened this spring. Uh, so the, the expansion from the smaller to the larger garage is what we'll be going through the permitting process at this point. Uh, and because that's an amendment, it, it will still require all the same uh, review, but maybe not as many meetings. Uh, and then, if everything passes, um, the hotel, as I understand it, uh, has a license agreement with, with uh, the Hilton Corporation, which requires them to start work by November. So they've been uh, waiting to see whether or not uh, the company and garage is going to happen, if it looks like it's going to. Um, they will be doing some work on site in November. Uh, it really makes the most sense for these two projects to be built uh, together, so the bulk of the work will probably start in December garage and hotels, flooring footings and everything at the same time. So it's much more efficient that way. So how are we going to pay for this, right? It's a $10 million project. I'm going to go through a little bit of the details about this. Um, that cost includes the, the, the costs of design, environmental, construction, permitting, that kind of thing. So we factored all that in. We have fairly good estimates, but estimates are still estimates. Um, it also assumes the current bond interest rate. Uh, we're, this will be funded on a 30-year uh, bond with uh, interest only for the first four years. And uh, if people really want to get into the cash flow, I'm happy to do that with them, but I could probably not do much of that today. We've assumed annual uh, CPI uh, adjustments of two and a quarter percent for the entire term. That's on both the revenue coming in as well as the expenses going out. So the idea is that they would be roughly comparable. TIF. I'm not going to go into a long thing about TIF, but. That is, it is critical to this project. Uh, the city recently was approved a tax increment financing uh, district. That means within that district, any new uh, taxable revenue, grand list as we call it, can be held in that district and used for public infrastructure that supports the private development so that the taxes from that are only used for this new project, which means the regular taxes that everybody else is paying aren't being used. So in this case, the estimate is that the new hotel and improvements to value on the Capitol Plaza project will result in about $150,000 a year in new taxes. That money will be redirected to pay for this garage. And that's all the tax money that's in this project. So the rest of it is not going on to the tax rate increasing anybody else's taxes. And we're only allowed to use that for 20 years. So that is in the pro forma for 20 years. The other thing that's conservative in this pro forma is that uh, the state doesn't allow us to increase the amount of, uh, or to estimate the increase of the amount of uh, property tax. So this shows that Capital Plaza's tax rate, tax bill is never gonna change for 20 years. Now, I'm sure they'd like that deal, but it actually realistically is going to go up a little bit from time to time like all the rest of ours do. So that means that 150 that we've estimated will actually get higher. The state doesn't allow us to assume that, so for our purposes, of being conservative, we've kept that flat the entire time. Uh, we also have not factored in any additional TIF increment. So any other new development in the TIF district could be used to help pay for this. But even though we know a few that might happen, we're not counting on them. So we're not speculating on something that might happen, nor are we assigning them. Partly to be careful 
and partly so that we may be able to use that increment for other public infrastructure needed, maybe to make other good projects happen. Finally, we've included 50,000 uh, and growing in capital reserve funds on an annual basis. Uh, I met uh, yesterday with St. Albans to go through the operation of their parking garage. That's what they use. That was re recommended to them by their parking garage expert. Uh, we've confirmed with them that that is the recommended one. So in, an, in our annual budget is 50,000 a year, essentially building up to be used for maintenance and repair to, to properly keep track of that. That's in addition to about 90,000 a year in annual maintenance and operating costs. Okay, where's the money coming from? Um, permits. We're capital as part of our deal with capital permits, they're going to capital plaza. Excuse me. They're going to purchase 200 permits um, per year. Uh, those can be used by them. They can also be used by someone else if they're not being used. We'll talk a little bit about uh, flex spending in a bit. Uh, flex uh, use in, in a bit. But they are committing to this for basically the life of the project. So for 30 years, and again, those rates go up, can go up by CPI. As others. We also are counting on 80 other permits to date. None of those have been identified, although certainly we are talking to the state. We're talking to people like Vermont Mutual. We are talking, uh, we're looking, we have 60 parking lot permits now that we sell, and we may consider just moving some of those into this garage and freeing up the surface parking spaces for a short term parking. So we're fairly confident we'll be able to find 80 parkers that are wanting to buy annual permits uh, at uh, 125 a month. We've also accounted for 30 spaces in the garage for the Christchurch affordable housing if it happens at a much lower amount, $50 per month. Uh, so that is to facilitate affordable housing and to, to ease the burden on that project and the people living there. Um, that really doesn't come into the third year, but I put it first year just so people could see it. And then um, 38 spaces that are just not accounted for for anybody that anyone can park in. Um, and we, the $80 a month estimate is actually based on our actual experience with parking lots and those kind of things. It wasn't a made up number. We did quite a bit of analysis of what we, what we get for pay as you go right now. And that was the number we came up with. 104 flex spaces. So this is really where the finances of the garage work and work well. This is what's done with parking garage management around. Um, someone has a permit for the lot, but if they're not there that day, there's spots open. So someone else parks there and pays. So essentially, you're, you're charging twice. Or Capital Plaza guests primarily use their spaces overnight while they're in the hotel, but they're gone during the day. So somebody else comes in during the day, parks in the spot to do whatever they're doing. So um, you know, you're not cheating anybody, it's just maximizing the use of the spot. So there will always be more spaces in the garage than when you add up all of these permits. And that is actually, when you think about it, what we do right now is surface parking. We have parking lots around, we sell a hundred dollar a month permit for sale back here. Um, but if Stephen Mills here had one, and he, and he wasn't here this week because he took vacation, and someone else is parking in that spot paying the daily rate every day, but he still has his permit for when he's here to use it. So that, that is a system that we're already using now, um, and it is the uh, way to run parking garages. So when you look at all that, then you add the TIF, this is the total annual revenue for the garage. So if you break it down, and I wanted to do this, because this really shows graphically where the money's coming from. Um, you've got the Capital Plaza permits and the TIF, and the hourly flex permits and all the other permits. And I mention this because um, I've heard several people say, and I'm going to talk about this more, that, you know, why is the city giving everything to Capital Plaza? And 62% of the revenue for this project is coming directly or indirectly from Capital Plaza. So if it's a $10 million project, I think it's fair to say about $6.2 million capitalized is coming from that group, uh, in addition to donating the land. So I just want to make people understand that. Um, but as you can see, other than TIF, which is the, the hotel increment only, there's no other property tax in, the, in that circle. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Done. Thank you. <laughs> Skipped right by the question and answer section. Uh, we gotta, we're actually going to go back into that. Here. you got to reopen that. Start it from the beginning. You got one right out of the hole. All right, 
I'll just keep going. We need someone younger here for the two of us. <laughs> Probably everyone younger. Right. Someone bring a teenager with them. Okay, perfect. So the expenses we talked about are pretty straightforward with this project. The bond is the biggest one. So this, this is based on the first 10 year average and I can explain why I did that versus an annual, but it had to do with the no interest in the bond the first few years and then full payment. So I tried to get a spread. But the bond is, you know, the high 500 thousands. The capital reserve, again, this, the reason it's higher than 50 is it's averaged up after 10 years. And the expenses themselves are about 90 to $100,000. So what are those expenses? We're not gonna add staff. There will be a fully automated uh, garage system with parking passes, cards, those types of things. Uh, but as I was told by St. Albans, make sure you have plenty of extra gates because people run into them. So there are gate supplies, there are cleaning, uh, emptying trash, there is a plowing in the winter uh, if, ne if needed, there are elevator uh, maintenance and uh, those kinds of things, electrical costs, utility costs, uh, various operating facilities. So they, uh, they spend less than this in a year, uh, but we estimate it high to be safe. Next, please. So just looking at the net of, this is what we're spending and this is what we're taking in. If you look at it cumulatively over time, you see the first five years we do really well. Um, this is our net income. That's because we're only paying interest on the bond for the first four. But then um, we actually go through a period of time where where the garage costs a little bit more than it uh, takes in. Not a lot, but a little, so we, we dip into that reserve we built up, and then it swings back out, and as you can see, and then when you get to the 25-year average, it dips again because the TIF revenue goes off after year 20. So that is kind of the trajectory of the garage and how we expect it to perform based on the assumptions that we have financially. Okay, what are the concerns? Well, first of all, we're building a bigger garage in the center of town that's part of the talk a lot about the design in a bit, but that is clearly a concern that I know is on a lot of people's mind. Reduce car use in the future. Um, we all are hoping for less cars in the future. I think uh, there are many reasons. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know if cars are going to change to different types of vehicles. We don't know if there's going to be less cars. What we do know is, as the mayor said, we have a lot of parking. I said 610 managed parking spaces plus everything else around. There's no reason why, if car use really drops, that this can't be the last place that people park. So the last 348 cars in Montpelier will be here, and everything else will be open space, new development, new whatever. So um, we're thinking that in the 30 years, there will still be 348 cars in Montpelier. We don't know. Uh, but that seems to be uh, what people are projecting. Uh, can't secure permit holders. I mean, obviously, you all saw the finances. If we don't have the 80 permit holders, uh, then you know, we're, we're in trouble. Or, or if, uh, and as I mentioned, we, we currently have 60 permit holders without going to any of the bigger employers. Um, so we are confident, but that is a risk factor if we can't find them. And finally, the flex spaces. I explained to you how those work, and you can see how important they are to the, the finances. If people don't park there, we don't get those flex spaces or if the permit holders are really successful and are using them all and we can't flex them as much, those are all risks. But they don't, have, those risks have not borne out in other, other, um, other places. Contingencies. This is where I get, I sneak out the back room and say, no, I didn't actually promise anything. <laughs> um, it's based on the current financial assumptions. We don't have bids, so the construction numbers could change. Um, Interest rates could change. Uh, any number of circumstances could change. Uh, so uh, it's also contingent on the council actually saying we're going to put this on a ballot and then the bond vote actually passing. So those are huge contingencies. Without those two things happening, this project won't go anywhere. Uh, and finally, obtaining regulatory permits, uh, as, as, we were, as we were talking earlier. Uh, we still have to go through a permit process. We still have to meet all the requirements. We have to do all the necessary things that any other project would do. Um, so that is something that has to happen. So our next step are securing our contractors. We've pretty much done that now. Um, taking the team that is, is DEW construction people are building one tailor, also building the hotel. 
Uh, they were secured by us for, uh, by a competitive bid process for one tailor, so, and they agreed to hold that bid price, those, the bid price for the parking garage. I don't know what deal they have with Capital Plaza, that's their business. Um, but they will be coordinating all three projects at the same time, which makes a lot of sense in efficiency. The uh, Desmond is a parking garage specialist. Um, people that really know what they're talking about with this, so we're engaging with them to advise us on the automatic, automated parking system and other design elements of a parking structure. And Rabidou uh, Architects out of Waterbury are the people that designed the hotel and the initial parking garage. Um, so it made sense to continue with them since they already have the knowledge and the work product to do. So that's who we'll be working with. Securing parking commitments. We will be talking to try to line up uh, the other parking people. Completing the design. And I don't just mean the external design that some people want, but, but for this to go out and actually be constructed, there's real engineering drawings and all that, and that takes time. There's people that need to do this. So the full structural design, permit applications and process, and of course, public outreach and information, much like what we're doing right now. So frequently asked questions. These are questions that we've heard just since this came up. Will traffic be reviewed? Putting a big parking garage in the center of town? And the answer is yes, it has to be. It's a, it's a permit requirement. The city did a traffic study for the one Taylor project with the buses. That basis of that was used to then do a traffic study for the new hotel and the 200 unit garage. And that information will be used to assess this. Um, certainly, it's in the center of town. We can have busy traffic. It's a major concern for everybody. We also note that parking garages, not, especially with these uses, not everyone leaves at the same time. So hotel guests come and go at different times. People visiting the city, there certainly is a morning and afternoon rush. Um, I was at the St. Albans Hotel. They have a very large number of permits that the state bought and a very large number of permits that their Hampton Inn bought. And it was maybe half, three quarters full. And I was like, what's that? And they said, well, the state workers are here all the, that day. And then the, about five o'clock, they leave and the hotel people come in. And so we're always half to two thirds full, even though our numbers show that we're selling out all our spots. Um, so I think those, those are all things that have to come in to factor when we're looking at traffic. What are the stormwater impacts? People are understandably and righteously uh, concerned about our river and Lake Champlain. Stormwater is a heavily regulated issue. We have to uh, get all our stormwater permits. We'll note though, and our architect said, is that this garage is going on top of paved surfaces. So it is already impervious surface that has stormwater now that goes into the city's drain system. It's not adding new um, impervious surface. doesn't mean we're not going to try to do the best we can and that we're going to drain it, we're going to have, have drainage, but the top of the garage is still just as impervious as the, the asphalt on the bottom. But we will be looking at that. Why is the hotel project leading the schedule? Well, I think the reason is we have an opportunity. Uh, when you want to do exciting things with economic development, sometimes you have to take these opportunities. I've been city manager here for 23 years. We've been talking about parking and parking garages for all of that time long before I, I came. This was an opportunity to work together with a, a private partner, create a public good without uh, a massive hit to the taxpayer. Um, and as I mentioned, they are on a schedule with Hilton. Therefore, for us to work this together, they cannot proceed. The next question was, why don't they just build their own garage? I think probably if they would, they could, if they would have, they, if they could have, they would have and not had to get into all this mess and come to meetings and, and all of this. But the fact is, um, the, the hotel itself is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $17 million. The garage, as you saw, is 10 for this size, so maybe it was eight. Um, the numbers just didn't work. The project didn't, didn't make sense um, to carry that whole bit. And so it is really a contingent. This is truly a but for if we can't build the garage, they can't build the hotel. So if this doesn't happen, it will be no hotel or, or garage. Um, we, they shared, kindly shared all of their numbers with our consultant. Us city officials didn't see them, but we have a private real estate consultant that's been working with us. They evaluated the performance and they said, yes, they're correct. This is, they can't support both entities. Uh, and, and again, this is that money's all being financed locally um, with people obviously putting up their own collateral and those kinds of things. It's not the Hilton Corporation. Is the city giving Capital Plaza a deal? Well, we have a deal, we have an agreement, but as I mentioned, they're paying close to 
62% of the costs of this project on an annual basis, and they're donating the land. Uh, so they're paying less than they would have paid for themselves, but they couldn't afford to do themselves. So we're getting a deal because now the city's gaining parking structure and potentially gaining uh, a hotel and all the other vitality that comes with it. Uh, I mean, those people may have philosophical differences about that, but I think in terms of the, the agreement that was reached is it's, it's fair and equitable, and um, certainly everyone is, is paying their fair share. Is the design final? That's really the biggest thing I'm going to spend a whole more. The answer is mostly no. Um, there are still chances for making some changes. However, those are bounded by cost, and they're bounded by time, and to some extent, the mass needed to bring in. I mean, without this number of cars, it really doesn't work, or spaces, excuse me. Without 350 spaces, it really doesn't work. So those are sort of the boundaries around the design, but there are things we can talk about. This is a, uh, this is a drawing, an aerial view, uh, conceptual, of the new garage. You can see this one is larger. It, it goes into the 60 State Street lot, um, creating still a roadway through. Um, and when we said the net new parking spaces, we were counting those that are lost on that parking lot. So it's uh, we're not double counting here. Um, and this is one version of, of this garage. So some things can change. And we, I've got a, we'll talk about design right now. So one is, can we build it only on capital property? Uh, plaza property and not have it go over onto the next lot, not only freeing up that lot for even more parking, but also the farmer's market and all the things we like that. The answer is yes, but it's going to require two more stories on the garage. Um, so if we want to have a six-story garage rather than a four-story, that's the trade-off. Um, so it, it would, uh, it's something we can talk about, um, but it is it does come with its pros and cons. <coughs> Can the garage have flat floors to, um, to deal with future reuse? The answer is yes. Uh, that question was asked. There's what they call the steep spiral on the end. It would, be, it would look slightly different. It could have flat full floors. That will add another floor, a floor and a half if we do that. And we still need to go on to the, the neighboring lot. But it can be done. So again, that's a trade-off. And financially, for that, it's about the same as what we are paying us. So it wouldn't be a change in finance be a change in design um, and it would be higher. What does the green wall consist of? This is the only cheat I have for the night. This shows how much I know about plants. It is going to be wisteria, clematis, and can't remember the handwriting, trumpet vines, uh, Boston ivy, English ivy, and Virginia creeper. And these are apparently uh, types of ivies that grow. They are very sustainable in this climate. They're going to be planted into the ground around. It will require some watering and maintenance at the beginning, the first year or two, as they start to grow, um, and then kind of manage on their own after that. So this was our, our architectural team recommended this for the, the garage. And that That is taking the, the garage design that um, Capitol Plaza had approved and extending it. We could certainly look at other facades when you start talking about things like brick or granite or anything like that, you start getting really expensive. Um, you know, underneath that is basically concrete facing. So I think the idea that a living green type thing is uh, preferable. Um, the main, so I mentioned the maintenance cost. It's built into our annual maintenance. It really isn't substantial. Um, so. Can a roof be added for public use? A lot of people have asked about a roof. We've got some good ideas. Could we have a another roof and maybe Create a, create a green roof and have it be a public park and elevate a public park. These are fantastic ideas. A roof that does not support those things adds another 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars to the project. Just a roof to cover it and have the structural support. So if we added the additional weight support and those kind of things for the activity, it would be more. Um, that is not support. That kind of money is not supported in this pro forma. Now, if we wanted to, as a community, make a collective decision that we we were willing to spend tax money for those kind of amenities, then that's a different discussion. But in terms of the, the financial pro forma of this, this project, that, that doesn't fly. But it, it, it could be done. How does this impact sight lines? Uh, at its current height, it's actually at or below the, uh, the 
Hampton Inn, all of those sight lines were viewed, reviewed by design review, so there would not be any uh, obstruction of the major view sheds. Uh, and can, so another question we had is, can parking be reduced at one Taylor Street? Uh, people said, well, get rid of all the parking at one Taylor, move them all into the garage, and we can have a bigger green space at one Taylor. And we maybe can. Um, we can't reduce all of it. I, I talked with Housing Vermont today. We have, the city has already signed a lease with them for parking, which we can't break unilaterally, and which all their financing is based on. Um, so their project has been successfully financed going with the premise that there is on-site parking for their residents. We think, though, that even honoring that, we may be able to reduce some. I don't have the number yet. We're, we're taking a look at that, so we could possibly open up some additional green space, but uh, can't get rid of all of them, but we can try to uh, make one tailor a little bit more green. Um, and then finally, can net zero principles be included? We have set a goal for net zero, and now we're building a big old parking garage. How does that work? And we get that. Um, the first thing we've, we've started looking at is putting solar panels on the top. Um, they would be above the, the, the top level parking. Um, our estimates tell us that it could power the entire garage except for the elevators. So all the internal lighting, every other the, the electric vehicle charging stations, all those kinds of things can be powered from the solar panels. Um, so we are actively seeking to include that in the project. Obviously, we will look at the materials and uh, other sustainable type things, again, within our budget. So yes, we are thinking about some of those things. This is an, uh, a ground level elevation of the same garage you saw the aerial view. So obviously from the ground, you don't see that open roof. You wouldn't see the solar panels. Uh, and this is, um, again, that right-hand side is into the Heaney parking lot. You see the new garage on the left-hand side. So just another view. Are there things we could do with that green wall? Of course. Do we want to have more openings? Yes. Do we want to put some art on the side? All very possible. All very um, the, the, the structure and size, um, unless, as I mentioned, we want to trade and go higher to get some other elements. Is basically what it is. So opportunities for public participation. Obviously, we have a uh, council meeting on October 3rd when they decide whether to go ahead with this. We've got a public information session tonight. And if we need to have a follow-up, we can certainly do that. Uh, there will be a formal public information hearing sometime between October 27 and November 5. The date has yet not yet been set. Um, that is required for the bond vote, so be another opportunity for people to hear about the final proposal and advocate for or against to their fellow voters. Um, in addition, there will be a permit hearings, our design review committee, development review meeting, board meetings uh, where this is, is considered. These are all open to the public, and there was active participation on the initial hotel and garage project, and we don't expect there will be continued participation. We will be putting regular information on the web, front porch forum, uh, in the bridge, uh, on all the usual places where the city uh, gives information of what's happening. And again, the bond vote on November 6th, the ultimate public participation uh, for this project is when you get to vote up or down. Uh, and any other suggestions that people have for what we can do for public um, discourse, I'm certainly open to you. There are lots of different things and we'd like to hear what people have to say. So, I'm done talking at you. Um, we'd like to get your questions, comments, and suggestions. I'll answer questions to the best that I am able. I'm certainly just welcome for comments. And um, that's all I have to say. We have 50 minutes. Less. Um, Okay. Um, the question was, where are the 50 surface spaces coming from, and where are they going to? Um, can, can you find the slide? It's like a site plan. It's a drawing. It's not mm -hmm. an actual conceptual drawing. So the current spaces that exist now, if you go behind Christchurch and Capitol Plaza parking lot, that back corner, the city leases those. Those are public parking spaces in there. So you can go in by a permit car. It's four hour maximum parking. So obviously there's a big garage on top of that. So those won't be available anymore. Right. 
But in this design, oh, you had it. Can't see it. Do people want me to turn the light off again? Just turn the one off. Yeah, that's good. Turn the one that closes the council. Don't turn both of them. Yeah. Thanks. So all the blue in the middle here, so the, the, the white in the front is the current Capitol Plaza. In the back, in the middle is the New Hampton Inn. To the right is the smaller parking garage, not, not the one we're talking about. The blue is basically pavement. Um, the road in, the road out, or both will be two way, but the accesses in and out of the hotel, in and out of the parking garage, etc. In the middle, it just shows trees and all that stuff, and it, it's hard to tell in this thing, but there are about 60 parking spaces created on that site plan, surface parking spaces. The hotel needs about 10 or so for themselves, for their uses, their tenants. Um, and so the city will lease the remaining 50 for public parking. So essentially replacing what's under that garage now and moving over there. I hope that answered your question. Questions? Barb. Yeah, would the, will the new enlarged parking structure open into the bikini lot as well? In other words, can people go in and out that way? That, that is to be determined. It possibly could. Um, it's a significant, so there's pros and cons to One, no, I'm sorry, sorry, the question was, can the proposed new, will the proposed new larger garage Ex have an exit and entrance off of the Heaney lot, the 60 State Street lot, as well as the center here um, by the, the Capitol Plaza. And it could, uh, in fact, the initial sketch by uh, our architect included that. Um, and there are advantages to that. I, I spent a long time talking to St. Albans about this yesterday. If, if you have a gate go down, it goes out of function, and people have another way to get out, rather than just having to open it and let everybody out free. Uh, so that's a, a good thing. Uh, it's always good to have second egress. The, the downside of it is that these automatic parking management systems are not inexpensive, and so you have to double them. You have to have them at both entrances, so double gate system, double electronic pass systems, those kind of things. The current budget only includes one set, but we're looking to see how, what that might be. So that, that could be. Can I have a follow-up? If, if that were to happen then, would that allow the lowest level of parking to be replaced? I understand that had to be removed because of floodplain issues, the lowest level of the parking structure. So the question was, if that happened, does that allow the lowest level of parking um, to be returned, I guess, and because of floodplain? Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. I don't understand that, all that floodplain things, so we will get an answer to that. Bill, now I, know, I believe White and Mercury are consultants for the uh, TIF project in a whole bit. Were they also the consultants for the financing for yes. this garage? Yes, yeah, so the question is, were White and Mercury consultants for the financing of the garage? Yes, they were. And could I have a follow-up on that? Yeah, of course. Um, I know that on the TIF proposal, there were a little, there were some assumptions that were built into their, their model. And I was wondering if they had some hard numbers or something that we could shed a little bit more light on the actual financing. So the question is, do we have something that can shed more light on the financing? And what do you mean? I mean, basically some of their assumptions. I just want to see what their assumptions were, you know, what the um, average cost per day, per space. You know, I'm just trying to figure out what, what the math was behind some of the stuff. Sure. I think we can certainly provide that. I mean, basically, the, the numbers that I ran for you right now were based, were all those assumptions that cost and revenues and usage um, patterns. We do have a spreadsheet. Their full pro forma was reviewed by the um, state for uh, does it make sense? I mean, they didn't approve whether you know this, we should do the project, but the, the economic people at the uh, Department of Commerce went through it, and their report was yes, these are reasonable uh, assumptions. Yes, this, this what they're saying is good. The TIF application was broader based because it was done before there was a specific project. We kind of had two parallel tracks. We were getting a TIF district approved and then negotiating this specific project. And so they were actually under two different contracts with us. One, one is a financial analyst and one is a TIF consultant. Yeah, thank you. Jill. Is there a way, Bill, we can understand more what TIF is? I know you've explained it, but telling is a teaching. And as you go through these numbers, it's very confusing. 
Okay. Boyfriend has a PhD, which doesn't get it. So it's it's it's. I I you are not alone. I so the question was, can I explain more about what TIFF is, and and try to make it more understandable? And it's one of those things that is, once you get it, it's kind of really simple, but explaining it is very difficult. So I, I you know, so I'm gonna try. What? So it's called a tax increment financing district. So any property in that district is sort of their, their property value. So everyone, let's pretend there's houses. Everyone here, your house has a value, right? So that's your tax value. That just goes to the city and the school, just like it always does. But let's say you built a second house on your property and you're in this district. And now that's going to be an extra two hundred thousand dollars in value, so your tax bill is going to be another five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars. And but in order to build that project, which is going to be a great thing for the city because a whole bunch of great things are going to happen there, you need a new road. You need another road coming around. And lo and behold, if we just spent six thousand dollars a year for twenty years, we could the city could build that road. So we're taking that new tax increment from that new project to build this public amenity, public infrastructure, which helps that project happen, but now has also opened up a couple of other lots that could also maybe have new houses. So, whereas we haven't touched the house that you already live in, that's just the same as it ever was. So it's, it's really trying to say, what, what is the new increment? That's what that means. It's the tax increment, and you only use that additional increment to finance public projects. We can't take tax increment, like we, using this project, we couldn't take the tax increment and just give it to the tap and pause and say, here, this is a subsidy for your project. It has to be for a public infrastructure that benefits more than just the private, that private. So we also couldn't have used the tax increment financing and built a 200 unit garage, basically, and said, yeah, that's, you need 200 spaces, so wink, wink, that's our public garage. That wouldn't pass the test because there's no public benefit to the larger garage creates the public benefit, therefore we can use the 150000 of new tax money from them to go into the cost of the project. Because it's helping their project happen, but it's also helping potentially other projects. So someone else could come in downtown and say, yeah, I never could have developed downtown, but now there's a place I could park, so I can. So it's helping to stimulate that. I hope that helped. Hello. I'll try again later. Something we'll be doing with Steve. Bill, as a follow-up to that, can you explain the relationship of uh, TIF districts to the education fund? Yes. Um, the advantage of using a TIF district from the municipal perspective, and I know there's differences also with that, is that 70% of, of the education tax, so most of us as homeowners, right, we pay about 40% of our tax bill comes to the city, about 60% goes for school taxes, some large portion of which goes to the state ed fund and then is refunded out. Under TIF, 70% of that education tax goes into the TIF fund. So for these types of projects, municipalities get to access funds that they wouldn't otherwise get, ed funds. The theory behind it is that, these that the ed fund never would have got this money because the project wouldn't have been built. So the ed fund's getting 30% that would have been zero. If this hotel doesn't get built, right? No one's getting that 150. The city or the infant. So by using that new increment, um, that's actually the seventy percent. So their taxes will actually be higher than that, but the rest will go to the state. So that's that's how that works. That, which is why the TIF district has to go through very um, robust review at the state level before they approve them, because essentially the state is foregoing potential education. Uh, Dan. All right. The, this is a follow on the financing. I have other questions, but for this specifically, uh, you, when you were looking at the contingencies before, if um, because we live in interesting economic times, um, what if the uh, hotel doesn't make its numbers, uh, let's say, and so the available uh, leasing of those uh, spots uh, fails to materialize in the, the yearly revenue? Well, who's on the hook for the, uh, the cost? Well, ultimately, so the question was, what happens if the hotel doesn't make its numbers? And um, who's on the hook, basically? So first of all, the hotel has a right to sublet. Um, and 
You can't steal customers anyway. That's, a, that's way down in the weeds. They have a right to sub them. So if they find they don't need as many, they can at least steal them this time if you want to do basis. But ultimately, I mean, let's call it like it is, this is a city bond. Um, it's being it's backed by the full faith and credit of the city. So if the whole thing should collapse, yes, the taxpayers would have to pay for it. Hide that or candy coat that in any way. Um, but they do have a contract, they would be required to meet that, and that would go with any, if they sold it to another hotel leader, then they would have to do that. It's like any long-term financial agreement, right? It's, 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 obviously, we're hoping this would help to succeed. So I had Les and Jill, I can't remember whose hands were up first. Les, I think, right. was. I, I, it's going back to those 50 spots, so who owns those 50 spots? Man? The city owns all the, you mean the 50 spots now? No, the, the, the 50 spots, the, the blue. The, the blue 50 spots are going to be owned by Capitol Plaza and leased by the city just as they are now. There's no change in the current status, just a different location. So how long is that lease for? I think you said 10 years or 30, right? We talked about that. 10 was option, 10 was option to renew. 10 was option to renew. <coughs> 10 was option to renew. <coughs> Certainly. 25 now. What's that? It's been 25 now. Yes, but the currently lease has gone for 25 years, and the current the option was 10 we renewal. Like I said, if cars reduce and we don't need it, then I, I don't know. We haven't discussed longer, but who you knows? I, I, is there a, you're looking like you have a follow-up question, so I don't want to rob you out of it. Don't come. Okay, <laughs> Jill? Two part questions. So let me deal with one and then the other. Um, the, because the maintenance costs would have been the same no matter where the location was. So yes. um, the there is a long list of things that are included, but basically we, we talk to other municipal uh, garage people as well as the people that like Desmond and there's another one called Simon and something that are basically parked in the garage experts is what they do. But they give you a recommended so it includes your annual operating, what is it going to be? As I said, we're not staffing it. That's usually a very, when somebody puts a person there, like an attendant, that right there adds a huge cost. Well, my friend wouldn't have been in on the okay. <laughs> well, so you do, so there are annual elevator and gate certifications, maintenance, and if you do them, I, I can't speak for the circumstance and how much maintenance and upkeep has happened at the private one, but there's a very detailed schedule of what needs to be done when joints need to be fixed and repaired and when the floor needs to be resealed and those kinds of things. And that is all included in the annual as well as the capital reserve on top of that. As I mentioned, um, good point for St. Albans, it has about six gates in a storage site right there so they can replace them quickly. Um, and they check regularly to make They have a person that goes, uh, uh, it's not really a full-time position, but a city person just goes through every day and picks up litter and you know, empties the trash and those kinds of things. They have a contract for, uh, you know, the top floor is open, so it's snow season, you gotta clear that out, and big city trucks. So those are parts of the costs. Um, as I said, elevator maintenance, um, those are the elements of it. So it's, it's not staff to cost, it's actual maintenance services, and we have service contracts for all of these things. And it's pretty detailed, as I said, St. Albans is in relatively the same market, and I think we assumed it might be more costly here than there. They're spending around 60 or 70 with all of those services I just did. So we did. As well as they are also setting the 50 aside. So 
John? Um, what about other oh, locations? I, yep, you're right. She had a second part sure. of your question. So locations, um, we have spent a long time looking at all sorts of locations. And there are pros and cons to really all of them. We have looked at the pit, and in fact, continue to look at the pit as, other, as a source of development. One, either they could, you know, a new development could use this, or a smaller debt could still happen. And this, this isn't going to solve the entire parking problem. It's in the short run anyway. So, um, but there are problems. One is, as big as that pit is, it's owned by sort of three separate owners. So Vermont Mutual has shown no interest in wanting to do this. They've been very, very clear about we want nothing to do with it. The federal government, on the other side, behind the post office, um, since 9-11, they've been talking, nope, can't get anyone near us. The state has been willing to talk to us, as they have been also uh, at the site across from one Taylor. Um, but the state owns 100 and some 106 parking spaces there already. They're free, they paid for it. So they've said, fine, you can build a garage here. We get 106 spaces free because we already own 106 spaces. We'll let you use our land, you can do what you want. Well, you try running these numbers with a quarter of the garage not producing any revenue, and it stops becoming feasible. Not saying it couldn't happen, but that's it. So we, we, when we did a study, the, the spaces that came out were, ironically enough, before this was ever proposed, one of the top spaces was exactly where we were putting the garage. A second was the, the parking lot right behind Obershans and all that stuff back there. It's getting in and out of those narrow alleys and traffic, that was problematic. We talked about putting it out back here, but there's issues with ledge, and again, had all the traffic going on in the state, and coming through where the emergency vehicles are. Uh, we mentioned the pit site, to Taylor Street, which is directly across the big, huge state parking lot. Um, in fact, before I started, the state proposed to put a 600 unit garage here, and I am told that the locals here went apoplectic and it didn't happen. Um, so, but one of the arguments about that was that um, it's too far, that it doesn't serve the downtown shoppers, that they're really just the state employee parking. And the other issue is it's right on the riverbank. But financially, it's the same problem. They have 166 surface spaces, and they said, fine, we can do it, but we get the 166 back they want more. So we'll take 200 and build what you want. And I, in fact, we looked at that as part of this with Capitol Plaza. They, you know, they wanted 200, Capitol Plaza needs 200, and so the city was going to do all this stuff and get you know, 25 spaces or something. You know, that's, that doesn't make any sense. So, we have certainly looked at it, but also it's driven in some part by the fact that here was an opportunity. There was a, a, a private development that needed parking, it was a chance to have economic development, they were willing to donate the land, and pay full freight. They're not getting a break on their parking rates. They're paying the same as anybody else. So that's how we But it wasn't just careless. Joe? So I know that one of the big pushes over the last couple of years was the readoption of the master plan new zoning, and I know that one of the key things in the city council has been more housing. Have they looked at any other uses of the site, or how did you guys come to the conclusion, other than the fact that the Shars had an opportunity to put a Hilton or a Hampton Inn on this property? I mean, your consultants should have looked at other potential uses for the site. Did they, what did they rule on the housing? So, um, we didn't necessarily look at other uses on this site, understanding this site is presently owned by the Capitol Plaza. So, you know, this was their opportunity to say, we have some land to bring to the table for this project. It meets a city need and it also meets a private need. That said, we have spent a fair amount of time, and they have, to try to accommodate the housing project of Christchurch. And, as we, and the city, of course, is constructing now a housing project right behind it. So certainly, uh, housing remains a top priority, but so does uh, commercial development and parking. Good question, but what wasn't our land just to use for other purposes? There's a lot of no, out there. Good question. Jack? Bill, uh, what's, I've heard uh, questions about the provision for uh, electric vehicle charging. Could you talk about that? Uh, so we will be including electric vehicle charging. Uh, I can't tell you off the hand what, how many spaces there are, but there will be some. I can't remember if it's before or whatever. St. Albans has that. We've got to figure out whether it would be pay, pay for the charging, um, but they, there will be electric vehicles in the And there will be the capacity 
load capacity built in, assuming that there's a growth in, in demand for that. Steve? Yeah, I'd like to question you. I looked at the 2015 traffic study that was done by Du Bois and King, and that's very different in scope and detail than the trip generation analysis that was done by the Bashar architect. Uh, and I don't see how this timing is going to line up. If you're going to do a complete traffic study of the generation of the combined three projects plus the construction of three simultaneous projects, you, you need a traffic study yesterday, you know, because this could gridlock the town for the next year with all that construction of three different projects simultaneously, plus the new added traffic of the garage. You're describing a two-way street. There's no way to put a street with right-of-way through the, by the Northfield Savings Bank. There, there, there's just insufficient right-of-way to put a, a street there. So you're talking about using a little driveway and a little driveway out the back of the Capitol Plaza for 348 cars. And it just doesn't pass the straight face test. So are you looking at the combined? Yes. Okay. So I don't want to have the detailed answers to all your questions and appreciate, um, but certainly that, you know, it's a two-way street now. The traffic comes in and out of- uh, It's a cluster. Uh, and, well, it wouldn't be a high-speed high street, street, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but, but yes, all of those need to be considered. But to have be, be putting a confluence park, you know, out behind a parking garage, you know, you, you know, I showed you that, but I'll pass that around. It's just that nobody's going to want to go to our Confluence Park if it's tucked behind a parking garage. And it, it, it does, it's the wrong place for a parking structure. And it, I believe we're barreling down this path, and we've lost the objectivity of the city evaluation. The city is now a promoter of this, obviously. And we need to back off or hire an independent advocate to take the place of the city as critical evaluator of such a project. So I uh, understand your concern. We, as I said, we still expect all of our people. Uh, we, we did permit review meetings with our staff that's doing this. I didn't attend, and it was very clear. I'm not going to be trying to lobby. They have to do their jobs, and we expect them. we are the regulator here. Uh, but we're also putting together a deal. We have recently formed the Montpelier Development Corporation, and we expect that for future projects like this, they would be doing the role the city's been doing. And quite frankly, we love them. We do an independent voice. It makes a lot of sense because they, they can be the advocate and the city can, can do that. But, uh, obviously, so the Act 250 review in the... In the right, there is no Act 250. Okay, so, but the full design review, development review board, all that stuff's going to be completed in time for a November vote. So, to be clear, it's an amendment to an existing permit, I believe. So no, the city is a different applicant. So I'm not going to argue with them. I'm telling you that I believe it goes faster than the full process because there's, it's working off an existing Maybe, you know, I wasn't at the meeting, as I told you. So I don't actually know all of the whys, what's, and wherefores. But technically, the city projects don't have to comply with design review. We would go through it anyway, as, as we should. Uh, but the DF Development Review Board has all the same criteria that everybody else has. Traffic, impact on labor, and all those things. And we have to meet all those tests just like you would or anybody else would. And they sit independently. We don't have any conversation with them. The council doesn't talk to them. I don't talk to them as far as what they decide. In your presentation, you kind of gave short shrift to the view shed analysis and said that's all been done. And I just did the walk the circuit and taking pictures. And every church spire from all that whole circuit around Memorial Drive back across Taylor, every church spire is going to be obstructed by this crash. You know, these are our landmarks. This is our, our town that we're What I said with. was that, I actually didn't say it had already been done. I said it was done for the Capitol Plaza project. So it needs to be updated, but the height of the, project, the, height of the garage was um, not above that of the afternoon. But it does have to be done. That is a criteria. It's, 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 I think we're taking shortcuts, and we, we should slow this down and let Hilton uh, extend its window for franchise agreement. Thank you. Dan? This, I guess, is a maintenance question, for uh, lack of a better word. Um, 
looking at the designs, it's your basic concrete box with a uh, lipstick, uh, green lipstick on it. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the first thing is, I've been following a lot of stuff in structural engineering, you're just seeing reports within other places that uh, turns out con uh, steel reinforced concrete has some actual problems, especially if road salt and wild moisture is hitting the regularly, it tends to not last uh, uh, that long. Uh, one of the things I'm proud of of our town is that it's got uh, a downtown, et cetera, that surpasses 100 years old. This is going to be somewhat of an ugly box with green lipstick on it uh, that is going to uh, be sitting there. And I'm wondering if, if any thought has been given to other ways of making this so that it is not so dependent on the concrete box. And one, one of the ways I would like to suggest is that you look at or consider the design of the, uh, uh, rather than the uh, green ivy, could you consider something that looked more like State Street? You know, where it was uh, brick and windows and stuff, so that it echoed the town and looked like it was part of the place rather than, uh, you know, sort of this cement box over there. I, I, I would like to ask if that could be done, and uh, I, so, I know there will be a cost. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, two things on that. One, uh, I don't know the, the particulars. We did actually speak quite a bit with the construction and the design people about the structural stability of this in this climate. And apparently there are two two ways to build these. One is the steel reinforced, and the other is something else, and I don't know what it is. So they were very clear. They they were doing the long-lasting one, not the one that's head okay. That is the extent of my knowledge of that. We can get you more info about the information on that. Um, the second, you know, the, the box is a function of, of the efficiency stat, the ramps and the abilities for cars, whether they're flat floors with a spiral or you, know, you have to get that many vehicles in, so it's, you can't really do alternate shapes. As far as external view, I mean, we could do anything people want if we're willing to spend the money. I mean, it really does come down to that. We can't do, so two things. One, in the current project budget, we could make some improvements. Like I said, we could open up our windows, we could do some things, some trims, I think there's a lot of things that could be done, but not substantial. If we were to brick or do any things, um, that's a, it's a very significant cost. We could choose to do that. As a community, we could choose to do that. I think that's going to be above and beyond. For example, I don't I don't see why we would ask the permit holders, who, for whom we have particularly the capital plus, for whom we've reached an agreement on the permit price based on what it costs to build the garage, and say we're going to bump up your permit price uh, because they're paying 60% of this just so we can all have um, brick. So that feeds into the, the criticism that other that, that. that this is that but I also understand one, that one customer that you're uh, building this for. Well, there's pays, we're not building it for one customer, but they are paying a large share of what it costs. I mean, there's, there's give and take. It's not, all, it's not all one way. So I think if the city wants to spend, I don't know what it costs, we'll have an estimate on it, more. Maybe we put a separate article on the ballot that says, you know, use the garage, and if yes, would you be willing to spend X more to have different experience. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. The mayor's glaring at me. But, um, <laughs> we'll, uh, you know, I, fair enough. But it, it's all mine. Steve. Well, to follow up on that question, has the city considered, as apparently was discussed with regard to the pit, putting um, commercial or residential um, facilities on the garage so that our city gateway, in effect, isn't just a parking garage, but has some degree of so commercial and residential vitality. You're going to tell me it's going to cost more, or you'll have to figure out the cost. Have you undertaken any sort of analysis like that, or will you? We can, uh, and no, we haven't. But what I'm told, what I understand is that um, the restriction is the site itself. Um, you know, the size of dimensions of the site. So if we were to put some, so it basically every square foot, that's a little bit of exaggeration, but the, the garage, it's built to, to maximize the number of parking spaces in the garage. So to build an office or a retail space into the building is going to remove parking spaces. So it becomes less, less beneficial for its prime use, so then you got to go higher. So I, it's not that it couldn't be done. Um, it's, there, it, in that case, it's not probably even a money issue. It's a, 
because presumably there will also be lease money coming in from those spaces. Uh, I'm thinking it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a trade-off in height. Um, uh, I wanted to just thank you because I've been obviously in email communication with Bill in the last couple of days until the last hours. And he's been very gracious in responding. My, um, some of my questions have been around um, what, what would the design, how would the design change if we had flat um, floors for the parking? Uh, you know, would it require ramps going around the outside of the building? Would that change the size of the building? And, and uh, the other question was, what could we potentially do on the top of the building? Some ideas that have emerged in my conversations with people in Montpelier have been a green space, um, a swimming pool, uh, tennis courts, all sorts of different ideas. And, uh, you know, I, I do think we have... Pardon me? Bungee <laughs> jumping. <laughs> hadn't heard that one. Great idea, Bill. Uh, you know, but there are some potential other uses that would, I think, address a little bit of, of what we're talking about here, which would bring some life to an otherwise fairly, I don't mean to say sterile, but, uh, you know, uh, not as vital. It's a box in your eyes. You yes, see. exactly. It's exactly. a perfect box of green lipstick. And, and so, you know, I, I, I wonder how we can efficiently uh, determine what some of those costs might be in the future and have a, potentially a two-step plan where we build the garage with enough capacity, weight capacity, to do something more. And I guess my other question, and so I'm just kind of not really asking a question, do, are we limited to five floors? Well, our, our zoning allows six. Oh, OK. But, I didn't but, realize that. But you've also heard people talking about view sheds and other values in the community and mass. So if it's already too big and hideous and we add a couple more floors to it, so I think there's there's a lot of trade-offs. I mean, you may have come in late, Elizabeth, and I, thanks to your prompting, I tried to answer some of those questions. Okay. We can do the, the, the flat floor. It's actually what they call the steep spirals on the ends of the building, so it probably would look a little different. There'd probably be little spiral things on the end of it. Or could we get, I think, a rendering for that? It turned out the cost for that is about the same as what we're doing now. Um, but it required an additional floor. So that was a trade-off. But we'll get a sense of what that might look like. Um, as far as the upper floor, um, I said this earlier, but I'll have, since you were the one that caused me to say it, I'll say it again. We, um, to just put a, a roof on the building would be about 1.2 to 1.5 million. That doesn't include the load bearing for human use or anything additional on top of that. Now, those were ballpark estimate numbers and we can chase that out. Again, I think those are additional costs. What I've asked for and late this afternoon was, um, don't have an answer yet, was what would it cost to do extra load to potentially add a roof in the future? So I, I can't answer that very well. And thank you for all your great suggestions. Right, so a lot of what I'm hearing is about concerns about the visual impact of the parking garage. Um, so I'm originally from the UK, and a lot of our garages kind of go underground. And I understand there's problems because of being so close to the river, but has any anything been done, any evaluation about going under versus going up, even if it's just one floor down or anything to do with that? So the earlier question that Barb asked about parking, said our preference would be to go down for the reasons that you meant. And I mean, we, we couldn't put the whole thing underground, but sure. to, to minimize the yeah. mass. Um, but there are floodplain issues, and there are issues with how you, you know, if a person gets caught down below the surface and water comes in, it is in a federal flood plain. So we have certain precautions and there are certain limits to how far we can go down. I, it's the same question, Chase, I don't have the details, but it is, it is a restricting factor. We both have. Barb? Oh, sorry. Um, just as sort of a follow-up of Dan's, um, our new zoning has architectural standards for the, the urban core, um, and as I read them, it would probably not allow for a concrete box with lipstick. 
Um, it, so is, has consideration been given to looking at the architectural standards? This is all going through the planning office. Uh, like I said, we had a permit meeting yesterday with the whole team and I purposely didn't attend. Oh, I see. <laughs> to kind of keep our rules separate, so I don't know. I will say that I believe, and I can be wrong, this may be because it's an existing permit and maybe coming into the 2011 the prior so Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was the prior. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of questions of <coughs> fact. Um, the, the original project for the hotel and the garage, I believe, was $17 million, if I'm correct. Um, so if you take away the garage, which the city's going to pay for that, what does that make the, the real term cost for the hotel, first of all? I'm not qualified to answer that question. You can talk to the owners. Okay. Okay. What do you answer that? It's $15 million. $15 million. But just the hotel. Just the hotel. Just the hotel is $15 million. Thank you. Um, it was $15 million to get it to $12 million. I did all the steel price and all that. Okay. It's $15 million. Thank you. Um, the second question is, um, <laughs> The original garage was going to be four stories. Is, is the larger garage going to be five stories? Or is it still four? I believe it's still four. Um, I reserve the right to be corrected, but I believe it's still four, but, be, but wider. Okay. And um, if you push into the heating lot, um, how might that affect the farmer's market? Uh, we're in discussions with it. will affect them somehow. We don't know how to Okay. Thank you. We want to resolve that. Okay. Well, follow up to that. What's the actual height of feet? Um, I'm not sure if the parking garage floor is the same as the right. commercial floor. Uh, we will get those dimensions. Somebody asked me that right before this meeting, and I realized that was a piece of information I didn't have other than winging it. So we'll get we'll add that to the public information that comes out, the, um, the actual dimensions. Elizabeth? Uh, so that I just wanted to say that in the research that I've done um, since John Snell talked about uh, flat floors at the council meeting, um, it turns out that the height for a standard garage that is angled is typically different than the height of a flat floored uh, garage that is then going to be repurposed for a multi-use building. So the, the height uh, the minimum, I guess, is somewhere around 11 or 12 feet, and the preferred is 15 feet. So a flat structured garage would potentially make the entire structure higher by uh, potentially 15 feet or so. But that was, that was a feedback. It was a trade-off of height. Yeah. Last question, gentlemen. I'm just wondering what the square footage was. Steve, Steve's just well, asked the height. <laughs> oh, I have the height. I, 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 you know, I don't want to guess, so we will we'll put that out tomorrow. I just don't have the exact dimensions. But I'd rather have them be completely accurate. So, so my understanding on the ten million dollar bond is that then there's six million dollars of interest. I feel like I read that somewhere. Oh, that over wrong? thirty years. That, that over thirty years. Is that going to be conveyed to the people who are voting so they understand that this is a thirty year? Yeah, I mean, we'll, so first of all, I, I appreciate the concern, and we certainly look at that. Every bond we vote, that is the exact same circumstance of when you, know, you borrow money, you pay it back with interest. And so every school bond, every city bond, it, it lists the, usually lists the term and the, ex, and, the, uh, and the expected interest rate. I don't know if we've actually calculated. It might say actually what the papers are, but it seems like a lot. I think a lot of students it is, but understand it's, what they end up paying. Yeah, the right, and money. that's but that's you know, um, there's, but there's a couple of factors there. Number one, most communities don't just have ten million dollars to pay cash for this or any other major project, um, and the other is now this is a little bit different because of the, the way it's being paid for with the users, but even if it was just a general fund project, we're going to build a new bridge, let's say. Um, essentially, that is depreciation for municipal government. So the people that live here today don't get socked with paying all $10 million, and then the users in 20 years don't. So by having, you know, someone leaves town, moves in, the people that move in 10 years from now are paying their share 
of the project and they're getting the benefit of it. So, but it, you, you borrow money, you pay for it. That's, that's and, if, and if the maintenance is such in 30 years and it's a, a hole that's standing there, is there going to have to be another bond to fix it up because it's not used so well? Well, I, I mean, I don't know the exact answer to that, but that's not that different from other infrastructure that we do. The estimated life of this is about 40 years, I'm sure told. Um, by then, there won't be any cars because Dan will have gotten rid of them. Well, I agree. <laughs> I agree. So, I don't um, think there will be any And so we could end up just tearing it down at the end of its useful life because the need won't be there as much. But it will have served its purpose in the meantime and then paid for or through the users. It. Okay. Or repurposed it. Thank right. you. Yes, indeed. Joe? A quick question. Now, the parking garage, I know we're running short on time. The parking garage is only one part of what we're going to be voting on on November 6th. We're actually going to be voting on the whole entire TIF district, and no. are you guys you guys are separating the split now? There's no vote on it. The TIF district is done and approved. Okay, gotcha. That, that's happened. That the, tip, the state approved the TIF, tif, tif district last week. That's we now have a TIF district. So, what the voters vote on is any projects that are borrowing money that are using TIF funds. So, like this. One. So they so in the future any other projects we did within the TIF district the voters get to vote on those projects. Okay, and the total proposed cost of the TIF district was between twenty seven and thirty million. With all the projects was that that was if we did everything, but there's no guarantee okay. that we'll do them. They, right. they, each each individual project gets gets, gets yeah. goes through a process just like this. Um, yeah. so there's no no commitment to be done in you pass the TIF. In fact, uh, someone just turned their tip, they got it, and never used it, and turned it back. Because So they passed it, but never did any of the projects. The wastewater plant, I think. Was so, no, he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about tip projects. But there may be other another item. We do have just, I, I do not want to derail this conversation in the last six minutes. But we are looking at a big upgrade of our water, our wastewater treatment plant um, that we also be on. And that's kind of, it's a whole different night of one of these. Um, <laughs> but different funding, different When will we actually have a site plan, an elevation plan of what is actually being proposed? We're working on that now. Obviously, something that has to be submitted as an application. So uh, I can't give you the exact date, but I'd say within a couple of weeks. And so, you know, every time we have these conversations, every time we get a suggestion, um, I send it to our folks and say, is this something we could do? Is this possible? What, what does this mean? What would it look like? What are the options mean? Taking these comments very seriously, we get it. This is going to be the center of our community. We want it to be the best it can be. Um, it's, it's, it's uh, just a quick um, thing about when those site plans are available. Um, you know, and it's great to have them digitally. I think that's wonderful. But it turns out that not everybody is a digital person, and so if those could be available either through the library or through one of the offices here, that'd be fantastic because for people to be able to take them home, we have, if Montpelier people are so thoughtful and considered and need some time and need a night or two to look at these things, so to have multiple copies so that they can look at them might be great. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, and we certainly would get those out every way possible. I, I could foresee the city manager writing a bridge article with all this information and putting updated in images in that. I think he might have that on his mind. Councilman <laughs> member Glenn Hutchison is here, actually gave me a good suggestion last week that we, we use our hall space to put up information about any of our city projects, not just this one, so anybody coming in can just see this is, this is the parking garage, this is the wastewater plant, this is the whatever. Here's pictures of it, here's the you know, general information. So I think we'll be taking advantage of Alternate scenarios, Jim? <laughs> to the extent that we have them. So um, we have five minutes till 8 o'clock. Not that that was a hard stop. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? I don't ask, say. Anybody want to argue for extending longer time? <laughs> I want to Not briefly you? say that I've done the massing preliminarily of this garage and you can you could do a two-level garage spanning the pit from the pavilion all the way to the sheriff's office with a third floor in the park-like scenario that you're talking about food carts etc housing housing i mean we we need to think this carefully if we're making a 10 million 16 million plus 40-year commitment 
to potentially trash our waterfront, we really need to think carefully about our alternatives and whether or not the advent of light tra passenger rail coming to and from the junction and the 302 and on to Barry is going to alleviate a lot of the need for this. I think a lot of the state commuters would rather leave their cars out there and take the train into town uh, than to congest the cars with day long parking. So I, I don't think we're, I think we're rushing this to meet a Bashara Hilton deadline and it could be a grave mistake and that we could, we could slow this down and do a thorough analysis. I don't think you could speak on behalf of the current day Vermont Mutual. I've heard conflicting information from one of our council members, nor the federal government with Leahy's clout on the, so this, the state is open to this. I think we need to revive, as your TIF consultant said we were doing in their TIF plan, we need to revive the discussion about the potential to use the entire pit lot as an alternative to this. I'm also told that could work in concert with the new hotel, but it would also spread things out over time and not create this three projects simultaneously with a huge tra unending traffic problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Thank you for spending a hot summer evening with us. Appreciate all your questions and <laughs> input it's been very helpful i hope you got something out of it as well and please stay in touch with the process